Well, this will be part five of assembling the engine. Hopefully we started. I mentioned earlier that I used American SAE threads fasteners for the engine. And it turns out the ones that are used on here are the, the British Association threads, uh, the diameters of them are very close to American threads. The, the 2BA is 180 thousandths diameter. I use 1032 which is 188. The 4BA bolts are 138 diameter which is 632 diameter as well. 7BA is 091 and 348. The only thing those are used for are the little screws to hold the lagging on there. But the 7BA is 091, 348 is 099, so they're close. And of course the quarter inch used for the grub screw for the flywheel is, uh, I used quarter inch for it, so quarter inch 28. Oh, before I get started, something that has really worked out nice for me, and many of you may already be aware of it, but my son's a gun enthusiast, and for Christmas, this last December, he gave me this, it's sold by Lyman, which is a big uh, reloading outfit, but this mat is uh, silicone, I believe, real flexible, kind of sticky. Uh, he'd seen me down here working on uh, the last engine I built, just on a rag on the table, and he said, you know, Dad... Uh, Murphy says you're going to snag that rag and dump everything on the floor. So he gave me this for Christmas. Really nice. Got these little nooks and crannies to hold all your stuff. So a tip for your other uh, hobbyists. So ready to complete the assembly. I think what I'll do is is get it mounted to this box bed first just so things hold together. And I had marked this uh, for the flywheel end, and again, these these are 1032 bolts, stainless steel. They've got little I call them washer bosses turned onto the bottom of them that stands proud of the hex, so uh, shouldn't tear up the paint. I don't think when I tighten them down there. But this will be easier to move everything around now that those splashers are on the connecting rods. I can't set it down unless it's on this box bed, so I'll just attach it to it. You know, it's been oh, a number of hours since the last uh, segment, which is where I put oil in the top of here. And of course, it hasn't run. When it's in motion, uh, the oil will uh, move more easily into the bushing around that pin, but uh, just sitting here on the bench, it's still full of oil. And none of it has disappeared. So now I'm going to uh, maybe not before the first time I run it on air, but the the drawing, the specifications on the drawing called for only three gaskets on the engine under the head and the bearing journals, crankshaft journals. And I have to admit, I, again, I ran it for at least 30 minutes off and on. Maybe, maybe 45 minutes, a long time. And I, I didn't ever have a leak. Now these are nicely machined surfaces on the top of the box bed and the bottom of the crankcase. But I still assumed that oil would weep out of there. And I did see, uh, 
I could see a little sheen of oil all along this junction between the two, but nothing ever dripped from there. But at any rate, I'm going to put a I'm going to put make a gasket and put under there. Just I can see why no reason why not to. Doesn't affect any. There's no buildup of tolerance there. It's just an oil sump. So okay. Oh, another tip. And I, you know, I've been some sort of a mechanic or machinist or tinkerer my whole life, and I'm I'm more than 30 years old now. And I went for. Well, I've had them now for several years, but I finally. Went at Sears, saw this pack of open end ignition wrench set. There's a god, there's a lot of them in there. Seven thirty seconds, fifteen sixty fourth quarter. There's eight wrenches in there, and they're nice quality wrenches. So anyway, nice if you work on models to have some nice wrenches that, that fit the bolts. So okay. I think what I'll do is uh, go ahead and install some of the fittings in the block. Now, I'm going to do something completely different with the exhaust. I'll show you why in a minute, but uh, this is the per drawing exhaust pipe. But, uh, I'm going to, I'll probably, certainly before I run it on steam, I'll go ahead and, and clean out the, the threads on this inlet port and use some, uh, uh, Loctite in these threads, but for now I'm just getting ready to test it. This little fitting is just something that that goes from the 3 8 24 on the inlet port to a standard quarter inch tube compression fitting so I can hook up the air compressor to it. I think I will install the, at least tentatively, the uh, drain cocks. I, I did some experimenting Oh, a week or so ago and just to see whether or not I could get these things to to line up properly I got some I found some little copper washers and one thing one thing I didn't do I got them to line up pretty well with these little washers but I didn't mark them to know which one goes in which port so I'm gonna have to do a little trial and error here Maybe I'll get lucky. Nope. Well, I had a 50-50 chance. I'm going to put a... At least initially. I mean, of course, I have a stop valve for the steam on the boiler. But I'm going to mount a stop valve directly to the steam inlet. Yeah, that didn't look very good either. Well, there's paint on there now. That may make a difference. Which one of these is closer? I have to put both of them in there and just see which one's the closest. Man. One thing I did do was kept the washers captive with the valve so I know which ones uh, worked before it was painted okay it's got to be the other way around I may uh, 
You know, I can probably torque these into position. What I don't want to do is torque them beyond position because then I'll be fighting with another set of either custom made or anyway washers to help align these. So I may for now just get them in there where they'll block off the steam or the air. Yeah, boy, and it feels tight too. I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to. You wouldn't think that three or four coats of paint would build up that much, but and that one can't. I don't, I don't get it. I just. Uh, well, anyway, I'll fool with that later. We'll go on and get some of this other stuff installed. Now the, I purchased this, I normally make these, but I was so busy working all day, every day on the engine that I purchased this uh, displacement lubricator. And it's kind of interesting, it's the ones I've, I've made, um, I've always had a flat surface screws up tight against the boss on the engine. Um, this one has got an angle. And when I machined this piece, I left a very sharp edge on the corner that that will seal against. But I kind of like that design, really. Now, I used the wrong, oh, oh, <laughs> that was another fitting I had for a special test. Can't remember from one hour to the next what the hell I've been doing. This is actually the, the bushing I made for the valve to control the steam. I'll mount it here in this place, but I'll just leave it on there so I remember what the heck it is. adjust both of these a little bit to try and get this rotated into the proper position. You know, I wonder what side nine sixteenths maybe or half inch, I don't know. I might have used made that out of five eighths hex. I'm not sure. I wish I had a skinny little wrench I could get down in there. I'm compressing an aluminum washer as I tighten this. That may be just about right. Oh, you know what? 
I'm doing this all out of sequence. I'll, uh, well, that's okay. I can, uh, remove this and do some of this. this. I'll show you what I'm going to do for the cylinder lagging. And it's going to be kind of fiddly. So, So I don't even need to worry about trying to get that online, but it looks like it's going to be about right. I'll have to work on those stupid drain cocks too. I don't know. I guess the paint made that much difference. But at any rate, under this uh, blued steel stuff, I'm going to put this insulating material. I got this at a pottery place or a ceramic place where they sell kilns and they use this stuff to insulate the kilns it kind of comes apart in layers and I've tested it it's a great insulator God, I hope this is the right stuff yeah, I mean, it's a great insulator and so I'm going to take sections of that and fill these areas of the the cylinders underneath that pack this full of that glass insulation to try and keep those cylinders as hot as I can keep them actually I'd like to keep the whole engine as hot as possible but I can put in about a quarter inch or more of that insulation more in in between the cylinders here enough to where it should help maintain good heat in those cylinders so I'll leave that till next time, and by then uh, I will have fiddled around with that, and fiddled around with these cocks, and maybe have it ready to test. Till later.